Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. <coughs> I want to talk about one thing is at us right, and just a disclaimer for the title: is not the one thing is at us right. Okay, so it's just one of the things that that is at us right. We all know that is at us a lot of things right, uh, but uh, I'm talking within the context of uh, participation and collaborating with the general public. Um, by that I mean with the people outside the space pros uh, communities. Uh, so, first of all, I want to tell you about where the idea for this talk uh, came from. I, in the last year in the Space Hub in Toulouse, I gave a short talk about the space software and about how to build software because I thought that that is something that ISA is doing wrong. Uh, and I don't want to repeat that talk here, but the main point was that ISA is not taking advantage of the open software and the open software communities. And there are a lot of people that would happily contribute code and knowledge to the development of software at ISA, but ISA is close to that kind of thing. So um, I ended up that talk with a wish list that you can see there. This is a fake screenshot that I made up uh, where I include a menu that I would like to see in the ISA website where you can go to uh, the list of all the projects that are available to contribute, a guide on how to contribute code, uh, that kind of things, links to all the code repositories of the agency, that would be great, I think. And uh, as a software developer myself, I think that is the future. So we only have two options there. We can, the ESA can pioneer there, that would be great, or NASA will do it, and then we will do it because it's, it's working for NASA, so I prefer the first option, obviously. And um, the thing is that after that talk, uh, I love ISA, but uh, I felt a little bit bad, a little bit guilty talking about something ISA is doing wrong. So uh, coming here, I wanted to talk about something ISA does right, and that is uh, learning and education. I think ISA is providing uh, very good uh, resources for learning and uh, Rosetta mission was like a peak on that kind of things. So I just want to talk about a small story, a successful story of using the resources that uh, ISA provides. Well, I live in a small town, uh, 40 kilometers north of Madrid and there in the public school and at the beginning of this course in last September, the teacher of the class of the six-year-old kids uh, tell us, the parents, that they were going to spend that uh, first uh, quarter talking about the universe, uh, presenting things like um, the sun, the stars, planets, that kind of basic things on astronomy and space to the small kids. And I think that it was a great idea, and I knew that uh, in November the meeting with Rosetta was coming, and I suggest her that she could at least mention the mission during the, the, uh, the program with the kids. And she thought that actually that was a great idea, but she needed some materials to prepare the classes about the Rosetta mission. So, so I, I went, went to the, looking online for things that I could give her, and I found great, great videos uh, from ESA and also from also from other agencies like DLR, uh, great videos explaining the mission that were really useful for the kids. They are all translated into different languages. And of course the great videos are with the cartoons that you probably have seen already that were really engaging with the kids and they love that kind of things. And not also this kind of multimedia resources you could even download from the ISA website paper models of, uh, of Rosetta, of Philae, and these kind of things. So with this uh, base, the teacher prepares some classes and prepares some activities with, with these models. And then we wait to see if the kids like it or not. And the result was much better than we expected. It was actually it was awesome. That is my six-year-old daughter, super happy going to school with her Rosetta model. <coughs> and the kids tell that that was the part during all the quarter that they loved the most. So when they finished the quarter, they decide to 
create a mural for the entrance of the classroom and they choose Rosetta and Philae to, to put up there. Uh, actually, it was a great success. It was something that they talk about in the classroom and the timing was great. So then they, they went home and they find the same things in the news that they can talk with their parents at the same time. And it, it went beyond what we expected. Uh, there was one day that I went to the school to talk with the teacher and the kids were, were all playing in the schoolyard and they were playing hide and seek but they had changed the name of the game. They were playing Rosetta. So the team uh, hiding were comets and the team of people looking for the other ones were filais. And you, you, can, you really uh, can hear all the children shouting around, hey, I'm Philae, I'm going to find you, Comet, I'm going to find you. It was awesome. <laughs> so uh, they were basically asking for more. Uh, and I went to the ESA website, and they provide even the 3D files, the files for 3D models of the, of the P... Of the 60, 67p comet, right? And so we can print with any 3D printer things like this for the kids to play to actually touch the comet and play with it. <coughs> of course, they love that thing, and and basically it was a great, great success. So um, the message here is that uh, they really love these kind of things. Uh, if we, I think the success of this. The space agencies and these are, uh, also depends on how the, the perception of the normal people, of the general public is about their missions, about their activities. And if we want to, the people to be engaged with the, with the space, we have to start with the small ones. And uh, if you get a, a six-year-old to get in love with the space, that's a person that will be in love with the space for the rest of her life. So this is a very good way to, to show them. Uh, this is the current website for kids that is a has. Uh, it's okay, uh, but I think it's too focused on kids. Uh, anyway, if there's someone from ISA working on these kind of things, I just want to say thank you because this, the resources you have there are great. And they are doing great. They are, they are doing it great, but I think there is also room for improvement. Um, if you see this website, uh, nobody over 12 will go there to find anything. But, uh, so I will also like to finish with a wish list. And it's something like this. <clears throat> because the paper models for Rosetta are great, but why stop there? Where are my Astro Samantha paper model? Where are my Alex paper model? Where are the 3D files for any other spaceships? Uh, and actually, why stop there? Why do not open a little bit to collaboration from the public? This, of course, that is a fake uh, screenshot. Uh, I would like to, to be able to contribute things back. I will, in these kind of things, uh, the connection with ISA looks from the outside uh, that it's always a little bit unidirectional. You cannot all come back to ISA and there is like nobody's listening to you. I would like to, I don't know, maybe upload a file of this same model, but modified to include a, a small fillet upside down somewhere or with the with landing sites marked with flags or whatever. If you open that to collaboration, people will, will upload amazing things that you cannot think of. Maybe there people will put up, I don't know, paper models of the Eurocom working on, the, on her panel, and that would be great. And that is also a website that is not targeted only to kids. Kids will go there to find something, but also I can see teachers or parents going there, or even teenagers or college students uh, going, to, going to find uh, files for playing with 3D printers. Uh, anyway, uh, the materials are great. I think there are room for improvement, but please keep them coming. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any questions from the audience? Not mine. It's, for, it's from a six-year-old. You don't want to take her from her heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you have the files available, so you can print it yourself. 
Somebody else? So you think that the data not project that was uh, presented yesterday could be a good uh, venture to start this kind of activities? Oh, I, I was in the parallel talk, so I didn't see that. Well, talk, I think you should see that then. Okay, I will. Because it, it, was, it was definitely to me a good venture to uh -huh. probably start discovering, not, not the educational part, but the open source. Uh -huh. the okay, part. sure. Yeah. So uh, I work for ASA Communications, so I just want to say thank you very much for passing on all those uh, compliments and, and, and confirming what I think we sort of knew about some of the good activities we do and the good efforts, the downloadables and all the other stuff. So thank you very much. And uh, in terms of the, uh, where you'd like to see some improvements or some changes or some, some other activities, uh, the head of ASA Communications is watching the webcast right now. So. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're speaking right to the, okay. to the top. Yeah, great. I, th I think that the, the main point is that it's not so difficult to provide good things. I mean, you don't need to, to give us big text with lessons of how a space works. You just give us a st good stories and characters and let the parents and the teachers and the, if you're uh, someone with nephews, you are ready for to play with all these things. So making things available are great. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Somebody else? Okay, I guess not. Okay. So yeah. thank you very thank much. You.